and welcome to this week's episode of DIY History. For the year of 2023, that is just right around the corner, we are going to be going through the entire book of the Jewel House of Art and Nature with Hugh Platt, which is basically a list of what he calls experiments straight from Shakespeare's lifetime. And I thought we would kick things off here in December by looking at one of his recipes or experiments that is unique to wintertime. He gives us an idea of how to keep your ink from freezing. I'll tell you all about it and we'll give it a try in this week's episode of DIY History. Now, I don't know about you, but I live in Alabama where my ink freezing is not really something that I worry about. In fact, we don't really worry about much of anything freezing here because it'll get cold for like two, three days, but that's it. If it snows here, it's it's intense. But that wasn't what it was like for William Shakespeare. In 16th and 17th century England, it got really, really cold every year. There was even one recorded instance of the Thames River freezing over. And I'm sorry, I should say Thames if I'm going to do that correctly. But the river there in London froze completely over. Now, that wasn't a regular occurrence, but it did get very, very cold there in, in England. And when you didn't have things like central heating and air, it, it got really cold. And apparently, according to Hugh Platt, your iron gall ink freezing up was, was a big deal. So in his book, The Jewel House of Art and Nature, which is basically a household manual of things that might come up and, and how to deal with them, it had instructions. You look this up and it says, put a few drops of aquavitae therein, and then it will not freeze in the hardest winter that can happen. That is a pretty bold claim. The hardest winter that can happen. Maybe he just was really familiar with, with London. I don't know. But so I decided to try this out. Now, if you've been following along here with us, you will remember our Iron Gall Inc. episode we did with Lucas Tucker from Scribal Workshop that came on the show and showed us how to make our own Iron Gall Inc. I will link you to the activity kit where you can learn how to make that yourself, as well as the episode where you can watch Lucas and I uh, make it. Uh, this jar, this exact jar is what we made with Lucas. And Aquavitae, as you may know from our episode with Rosie Wilmot and the Scotch Whiskey Association, is basically whiskey. Aquavitae um, comes from the word yuskaba in Scottish Gaelic, um, and that's where we get the word whiskey for this beverage. And I'm just going to fill this. Hugh Platt doesn't give any kind of measurement, so I'm just going to fill this small glass about halfway. Oop, I, I almost did it without spilling it. Wow, that smells horrible. Whew, gracious, ink has a horrible smell. All right, so now what we're gonna do, take the top off and we'll just add, I feel like this is wasteful of the whiskey, but whatever. We'll add, it says a few drops. So we're just gonna put like a splash. I feel like I expect this to work because, of course, whiskey doesn't freeze in the freezer, so it should keep the ink from freezing. Um, but I added more than what probably counts as drops because I feel like there's got to be enough whiskey in the ink for it to keep it from, from freezing. So I wanted to put enough. But anyway, let's take it to the freezer and we'll see. dun ta -na. And... Just set this right here. Ta -da. And there we go. Now it's in the freezer and we'll just give it two hours and come back and check it. While we're waiting on the Iron Gall ink to either freeze or not, I wanted to take a second and remind you that Iron Gall ink is poisonous. So if you're trying this activity out at home, don't get the Iron Gall ink on any of your whiskey apparatus. You'll notice I was holding the jug up above the glass a good ways and we thoroughly cleaned the sink and, and anything that the spilt Iron Gall ink had come in contact with, including washing my hands really well. And you'll want to do that too. You do not want to consume any Iron Gall ink even accidentally. The ingredients used to make iron gall ink are toxic to humans so be very careful with that during this activity Dun -dun -dun. Huh. okay so that looks pretty frozen to me let's take it over here take a knife and poke it oh look at that it's only frozen right on top it's not frozen down in there. 
Ta-da! Well, what do you know? You'd need to stir it a lot, but you could definitely still write with that. I've completely ruined this knife though. We won't be eating with this anymore. So it turns out that adding aquavitae or whiskey in our case to your iron gall ink can keep it from freezing under very cold conditions. Now in Hugh Platt's defense, my freezer is a probably a lot colder than even the harshest winters in England, but it does show that adding aquavitae can keep your iron gall ink from freezing. So thank you, Hugh. If you like recipes, games, and crafts from the life of William Shakespeare, then hit that like and subscribe button because we're here every Saturday with new episodes. And if you're an educator in Shakespeare history who would like to take activities like this into your classroom, or if you just want to try some of these activities out for yourself at home because you love Shakespeare history that much, then consider becoming a member here at That Shakespeare Life. I'll put links to our members area down below this video where you can find printable instructions, step-by-step -step guides, and even more history about the activities we do here on DIY history, all inside the members area. That's it for this week. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.